Posey Gloves here, and this is the fifth video in the Vocodex mini series in the FL12 effects larger series. And today we're gonna to be talking about the envelopes. So you should be familiar with every button and knob and everything. You should be familiar with this. You should have messed with different modulators, sort of gone through the relationships. You then there should not be a single button or knob on this page that you're not familiar with, except for these here envelopes and what an envelope is. So we're going to cover what envelopes are now. This is a per band envelope. You should also be familiar with the idea of vocoders now. And so now, now that uh, you know what a carrier, I guess I'm going to cover this super fast too. Carrier synthesizer, carrier synthesizer is simply, uh, these are built in carrier synths. So you would not have to have a carrier synthesizer in here. You'd be able to use one of these. Down here. Whoa, that was like really loud. I did not appreciate that at all. And Psychotics. apparently it's going to do that every time. So you could use those if you so desire. I like my carrier more. So I'm going to use that one. And I'm not using the left right now because this is just demonstration purposes. So uh, right now, first let's talk about what an envelope is. So we have our frequency range here. So here's like 20 hertz. So this is the lower end. And here is 20 kilohertz. Or yeah, 20 kilohertz. And here's 10K and 5K and 2K and all that jazz and they even low bass bass low mid mid I, th I think it's kind of funny i wonder what prs stands for like pristine no i don't know it's probably it's got to have some technical name that i just don't know so here is our frequency spectrum and as you can see this line right here is basically unaffected if you ever want to return an envelope to default you have to know what that envelope is controlling and then put it in the position where it doesn't it's got a one-to-one -one relationship it doesn't do anything to your sound so we are right now in the first one. This is in the equalizer section, which would make sense. There's an EQ here. There's other modes that have envelope attacks. And you see occasionally our things go away. So uh, each one, so our bands are going to appear here. Subscribe. And we've been seeing our bands here. They, they come up and come down. You see a line mapping the last relationship they really held with the modulator. So this is the modulator coming in and out. And... Uh, now, one thing to do, because I've been turning up the sound goodizer to hear it. This is not the best way. If you want to see bands real clearly, you might want to turn this down. Subscribe. And you see it's not that loud, but we could normalize. Subscribe to composing. And we could see our spectrum like a million times better. And it's better actually for a bunch of different mixing reasons and perceived volume reasons. Another thing that I should be doing is. I should technically be monitoring it like a volume like that. And what I just did right there, you see how I just turned all those faders up? Man, I was trying to do that in Pro Tools the other day, and I just had the worst time figuring it out. It's not that simple. So I'm just like, control, swipe, move. And they were like, no, you got to set up groups and do all these things. I'm like, oh, I don't want to set up groups. I just want to select my channels and drag them down. And I'm sure it's something like I just need to hold down shift while I'm doing it. But I just did. I just, yeah. Anyways, so, uh, so our... Our bands Subscribe. show up here, and we can affect each one of these bands as we go. Now, it's important to note what our control is, what we're controlling, and so you can map them differently. So, for example, this is band game multiplier, which is what this is. And we already talked about this, so I don't even need to tell you what it does. And down here, we have a multiplication of... Now, you notice it has it gives us a decibel readout over here, but it also... Oh, it just gives us a decibel readout, but this is our multiplier. So, down here, multiplies it by zero, so... You get zero out, but if you move it up just a little bit, Subscribe. it multiplies it by a very, very small number. Subscribe. And we can do crazy things like that, where the lower ones are multiplied by a number actually get expanded, which might sound better in this direction. And the lower ones get multiplied by a smaller number. So this is so it gets so in the middle here. That's just a one-run relationship. This one's not affected. Here are the envelopes. The bandwidth gets larger and larger and larger and larger and remember it's bandwidth not volume it's bandwidth so something that you're going to look at envelopes sometimes you'll assume they control one thing when they control something else so it's very important to maybe say it out loud so oh this is the bandwidth envelope or whatever and then as you go down they'll get smaller and smaller and smaller subscribe to compose and you can add extra point this is like ridiculous guys like this is scary subscribe to composing gloves and support like this, what this allows you to do is so awesome. I totally recommend coming in here and giving it your own experiments. Now let's talk about, cause you've seen, 
you're seeing me just move stuff around. Let's talk about how to manipulate these things. So you can right click. Okay, so first, uh, I'm gonna ignore this mouth. Well, let's talk about the mouth real quick. So let's say you do something here and you've moved it. When you click the mouth, you link it to the modulator pitch shift. This is the modulator pitch shift. My bad. Okay, that's what I thought. I'm reading up here just to be absolutely sure. And I saw the mouth and I associated it with mouth, but it's actually linked to this control over here, which is, I don't know why. I don't know why that's a thing. You link this control, I believe to this control is how it works. And so when you click this, the relationship that these frequencies originally had according to your remapping of whatever parameter you're controlling. See, now we're getting kind of technical here, but like we're modulating the bandwidth. And so it's got this relationship to the bandwidth initially. When you click this button, and this does increase your CPU load, and you can activate it on a whole, the, it, it may disappear if this is just not an option, which it would not, meaning it's like impossible to do. But you have this, and it links it to this. So as you move your pitch shift around, your bandwidth relationship in this scenario would be maintained as you move it around. Subscribe to Rising Labs and support world domination. You see, this gets more boomy when we come down here. Subscribe to Rising Labs and support world domination. Now, uh, this is something that if that's something you want to do, that's cool. If not, I uh. Don't find myself touching it all that much. But, uh, and for example, most of the times you touch it, it's because you specifically know what this does. This is not something that you just randomly click, like, oh, that sounds better. Like, the chances of that happening are like nil. So, like, as you can see, the, the differences aren't totally enormous unless you have like the right scenario set up. So, that's what this is. So, we can add points. Let's talk about putting points down. You can add points just by right clicking. You can right click to delete points. Uh, um, um, I'm just seeing something real fast. Okay. So another thing, you have this magnet tool, which will allow you to snap to a grid, but we don't have a grid on here. So I find that a little unusual. You can, the snowflake freezes your envelope. So you can no longer click or change your envelope. If you've got your envelope just the way you want, just to be safe, you can click that. This footprint, this footprint step editing, it's essentially your pencil tool. I don't even know why, but you can draw curves in. And if you want to delete a lot of points at the same time, you can just right click and scroll across. It's got to be on the pencil tool to do this. And that's how you de delete points super quick. You cannot right click your, get to the right click menu using this. So you right click, there's a whole bunch of different um, angle types. So you can go down a single curve and you can hit your bevel to change that. And like they have wave and it looks like there's no bevel, but it's in here somewhere. There it is. And so you could do that. You saw me messing with that one earlier. And so I usually keep mine on just single curve unless I have a specific shape I'm really going for. But that's where these are. You could copy values. Like say this is a value you want. You could paste it over here and you could paste that same value and it's all great and dandy. So that's manipulating this one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if you do have a grid, this is again your snap to grid setting. And it appears like it's got some sort of a snap, but it's very small snap on this and then this last one is slide so if you have slide on so you can have slide and snap to grid on if you want if you have slide on all your other points will move to for your other for this point they will slide around they'll maintain their relationship so if you've got points like this you can only slide the nearest points on one side so it'll only slide the points on the side you can't go past this point over here there's a limit and so that's that. So you'll eventually get really fast at manipulating these types of things. So don't even worry about it. So that's your bandwidth multiplier. That's what this mouth does. And then you've got all these extra things. At this point, I'm just going to refer to my Harmer series. In Harmer, I cover envelopes. It's a two-part in-depth series uh, a little later in the series. Don't look, don't look at the first one. And uh, there's a part where I cover what these things do. They're, the, they're literally the same in every one of ImageLine's plugins. So just use, go, just go look at that. And I'll talk about that. Now, Harmer has a lot of sim similar envelopes like this. So if you feel like I didn't do this justice, you can go look at that. I spend a whole two videos on just envelopes and LFOs and stuff. Now, this doesn't have any L LFOs. That'd be kind of cool, though. So that's your band game multiplier. It's with that controls. Uh, band panning. So you can pan specific bands uh, to the left or to the right. And so this is 100% right. Here's 100% left. And you could do an interesting stereo uh post pseudo stereo shape it's fake stereo but 
you could do something like that. Subscribe to Composing Gloves. So this gives you extraordinary control over your spatial context of your vocoder too. So it's really valuable from a mixing perspective. Subscribe to Composing. Subscribe. Now the great irony is most mixers are not going to use this for the purposes we're using it for. And most sound designers I have found don't consider mixing decisions like this as they're going along like hugely. So the really good ones do because they, they're essentially both. Subscribe to so Composing Gloves like and support. So you can move your spectral, your spectrum, and you can pan it over. The, that's like, that's really cool. Okay, so, and you can link this up to your modulator pitch shift. There's weird stuff. So, like, for example, now that you know what that does, if we did do a weird band pass shape. Subscribe to Composing Gloves and support. Your specific frequencies would stay panned as they originally were. So as you move around your frequency pitch shift, you'll pitch shift, you'll get that. So kind of strange. Band gain offset. So you can, uh, this is essentially like an EQ. So you can change the gain of individual bands. Subscribe to Composing Gloves and support world domination. Subscribe to Composing Gloves and support world domination. Man, imagine if you could automate that. Now, you can always just use an EQ if you desire to automate this as well. It'd just be cool to be able to automate these points. Modulator noise level. We've already talked about this. So this is a gate envelope. So zero is negative, no amplitude. You can use the detection setting to get that. If it does, if the band level does not go past this. Subscribe to. And we actually might need, I've normalized it and brought it up. So I might need to reevaluate my noise level it's like you can hear noise right there so what it's gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hit that come over here detect modulator noise level it resets i hit play it detects it well you gotta hit play pretty quick if you don't it won't work and there's my new one you see it's substantially louder so that's my noise level and so if a band is underneath this value then i will not as you can see, I will not hear it. It does not get through. But as soon as it passes that value, so all these things are clearly louder than this. So these bands will get louder. You will hear it. It's, a, it's just a gate if you're not familiar with that type of thing. Then we have this modulator pass through. You can tell it to let part of your modulator through. So we could be like, hey, I want this section of my modulator to get through here. World domination. And I could even say, I want this area world domination world domination you could do some really unusual maybe comb filtering effects or world whatever. domination now some that you should be aware of so as you see you as you bring it up they get louder and louder and louder some you should be aware of is your frequency spectrum so something i encourage you to do is get familiar with it and you might be like well yeah no dur but this is seriously the other day i had to do this and it was one of the more useful things um, that really got me going with Hertz values, uh, something that, cause I've been learning Hertz values and, and as you go, cause when you get analog stuff, they don't have like a nice graphic that visually shows you what's going on. And you just use your ears after that, but it's like, you got to turn these knobs that have no graphic and you just got to know where crap is. And you got to have some sort of an idea of what you're touching. That's like it. So with this, what they had us do is they had us create a band. And then we listened to white noise and then we just we just spent like a half hour, literally a whole half hour listening to different bands and widths and uh, trying out different resonances and just associating certain frequency spectrums uh, areas with with uh, Hertz so that when we made decisions, we could do that. And so that's something that I think would come very handy right here. Like this is exactly why I went to the ranges I did. And I kind of had an idea of what to expect. And so if you want to learn that, that is one of the things you should do. And it will make you better at that. So that's modulator pass through. So these are all our equalizer type things. As you can see, equalizers used kind of generally because it just it controls. A, it's more like a really, really fancy mixer. So now we have this envelope follower. So we can adjust the hold value. So we can increase hold values for certain bands and a not for other bands. So we could have like these get held out longer and we could have these come down world domination and my pant i've left my panning alone is beginning to bother me so world domination i want that world domination 
If I did something more like world dominant, that's just yeah. Might be useful for your mix though. It might sound way better in a mix as a solo effect. Uh, with headphones, I don't know. World domination. World. World domination. World domin. World dominate. World domination. World domination. World domination. So you can get some distortion effects on there too. That. That effect. World domination. That sounds like the um cube or log distortion on. Um, Harmer. Uh, when you distort a square wave I think that every time so maybe it's related because it's got the multi-band and harm is additive who knows now well, we can uh, do the same thing with our attack so we could have now I'm gonna the, so you can do that with attack I'm not gonna mess with attack really I'm gonna go down here to release and so I could turn the release way up on these bands specifically world domination world domination world domination and if this is limited to your release out, so, okay, that's something that's a good thing to bring up. So my hold's only up to here, which is one reason why we didn't hear a huge thing. If I had to turn my hold all the way on in order to hear the full advantage of an envelope. So if I want this to be my release setting exclusively, I need to, re and this is something I see a mistake all the time when I did watch vocoder videos was they didn't do this, uh, which, you know, I might do this too just from habit, but of touching envelopes but you need to turn your release all the way on for this to have its full effect so if we take this down we could see now this is the equivalent of this knob being here if i put this knob here it basically bottlenecks any change i can have to this range so i need to turn it all the way up world domination world domination world domination so we could come in here and maybe subscribe to the posing gloves and support world domination. World domination. So that's a very useful thing. Now I'm gonna put it back at its original value and undo this. But I could, I mean, I don't know about you, but I could see myself using something like that. That's a nice thing. So that's the release. Now we have this spectral distribution stuff. Now we have this band distribution. I've actually edited. No, is this the default curve? I can't even remember anymore. World domination. But you could see our spectrum. World domination. And we could see as it moves around here. Subscri you notice we don't have a formance. We can't link this to the modulator pitch shift here. So this band distribution is just how your bands are distributed. So we could say, I want these bands to be distributed. World domination. And we want them to be like shoved up there or whatever. World domination. World domination. So this essentially is like, I want my bands to be pushed over there, or I want them to be pulled. You can get some really wonky effects here, and you're just changing what bands, how the bands are interpreted. So, for example, we could take our range, just make it linear. World domination. That's the original. We could say, essentially, put the bands in the lower end so take these bands in world domination and take them down here we could push them in the upper end world so essentially wherever you have a pull like something that goes up like this their bands are going to be pulled there world domination world domination and you can do you can just do stuff so that's that um i uh so i had a low end emphasis here i probably a mid emphasis would be better so i might do something like this world domination world domination now this is world. stuff you just you can't do stuff like this with eq you just can't affect band distribution you just can't do that world domination world domination world domination so that's something uh here we have bandwidth so this is essentially right here, the bandwidth control. It's the mapping editor for that. So world domination. You see, these are really skinny bands. World domination. World domination. World domination. World domination. And you can create some really interesting resonances. So you can have different bandwidths on different frequencies. That's something that's rare in a vocoder. You just don't get that kind of control. So that's like scary. A lot of I've not had another vocoder where this is even possible. So 
this is a mega i highly encourage you to come in here you get weird resonant frequencies you have total control over your shape this is this is top stop top notch stuff right here they have modulator pitch shift which is the control for this so if you move let's uh let's change this up here you can go even further if you wanted you can make it even more feminine now we're affecting our noise right here a lot too so we might come down here and do some weird shapes and then you have the saturation mix these are um distortion so if you are new to saturation and distortion and stuff go look up my in the same series the wave shaper video and i talk about distortion this is essentially you can distort bands individually which drives them a bit harder that's not driven that's driven and this is the saturation mix the saturation curve is controlled here it's one to one so it's not going to do anything quite yet as we move it now no distortion there's quite a bit of distortion there what is this doing this is essentially remapping the amplitude so we say if a value is here make well hoo, 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 let's do something over here we're saying make these values get shoved to the zero crop to get shoved to the maximum faster and they distort creating square waves so yeah just go watch the fruity wave shaper video if you're more curious about this because it's essentially the same thing and then this is your now this is not having its total effect because i have a weird mix shape here so this is a so this is essentially my mix is all the way active and i could control it from this window only i don't understand i feel like this is there must be a reason this is i mean you can mix it again separately i mean i feel like you would just manipulate the one-to-one -one relationship like you do in the wave shaper and you'd only need one envelope but they give you a second one to do it and i'm not complaining because there's more envelopes you know who knows is uh maybe I don't know why I would use this over this. And the default curve is 1 to 1, so it's unaffected. Or its uh, default curve is off, I believe. So, I don't know, it's just interesting. So you can distort your stuff too. Now, this is stuff that you generally don't associate with vocoders. So, yeah, you can do that. Again, just go watch that video. That is that. This is Vocodex. That is what this does. Amazing plugin. Like, I love it. This is one I've wanted to do for a while. It's just a lot of information and it's kind of complicated. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some great ideas out of, you know, what you want to do with it. And maybe I hope you use it in your productions. If you have a track that features Vocodex, drop it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. I mean, if it gets to a point where I'm getting so much stuff that I just can't do this anymore, I probably won't hear it. But other people might listen to it. I don't know. If it doesn't have... Now, if you see tracks down there that don't have references to Vocodex heavily, freaking dislike that track or something. Like, I don't want that crap getting anywhere. So, yeah. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Subscribe. And have a blessed day. <laughs> Reverse it.